the newest version of ArcGIS Pro uh, 3.3 has a very cool and interesting feature called flood simulation. Uh, and I'm going to give you a tutorial of how it works and what are the underlying assumptions behind that. Uh, I should tell you that this is only available with advanced licenses to ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so flood simulation essentially uses shallow water equations within a defined area of interest to simulate how water runs and moves and accumulates over a scene that you have created in ArcGIS Pro. So I have a map over here. I need to convert this to a scene first. In, a, in other words, a difference between a map and a scene is that a scene has 3D elements to it. So I am going to uh, go under view and then convert this to a local scene. This is a portion of the Minnehaha Creek that I want to show you how flood simulation works with. So it is going to create a 3D uh, map scene for this area. And you can see that already there is a default elevation associated with the area that I have. Not a good thing is that you can change your base map to one of these 3D base maps, like topographic, for example, base map, and then you can use the 3D features of the 3D base map as, as well. So this is obviously 2D. Now the buildings are going to show up, and I will show you how you can convert that to um, uh, a different view. So if you click on this person over here and then use your a uh, mouse to change the view like this. This is a little bit of like angled view and then change it back over here, zoom out and zoom in into the um, section that I was interested in. This portion of the Minnehaha Creek is the portion that I am interested in. So you can see the 3D view of the buildings in the area. Okay. So once you have that, now you're ready to create a flood simulation. Flood simulation lives under analysis tab and under simulation, there are different versions of that. So if you hover over them, this would be a flood simulation with no uh, preset water to the map. Uh, you can create a rainfall and you can create a water source like a hydrograph or a source of water. I'm gonna start with the rainfall. When you click on rainfall, this edits uh, pops up over here and it tells you how you want to essentially uh, what it what is air what is the area of interest that you want to consider so the area of interest for me I'm going to create a rectangle right over this section of Minnehaha Creek so you can see that I'm selecting a uh, four or five blocks over here and I'm going to Double click. Okay, so you can see the boundaries of my areas are right now over here. Edit is done. I'm going to confirm that. Okay, perfect. Now this is my area. Now the area is there. A flood layer has shown up. The flood layer will give you water depth, area of interest, so on and so forth. Um, in order to see all of those, you need to go under simulation. And under uh, simulation, you will be able to uh, set the duration of um, your simulation. One hour is too long. I'm going to do it um, 10 minutes. The amount of rainfall per hour that you want to have, I am going to go with a very large number, number to get um, the visual effects, so 200 millimeters. And if you have evaporation, you will be able to enter evaporation right over here. When you run this for the first time, I didn't run this for the first time, but when you run it for the first time, the configure simulation pane will pop up for you over here. Let me, uh, um, oh, there we go. Okay. Here you can also the, set the duration. Um, uh, so what, the water depth, the water depth raster, if you have a raster that gives you the depth of water in the creek that you are modeling, you can actually enter that over here and it will consider that depth before as an initial con condition for your simulation. If you have an infiltration, you can actually import your infiltration over here. Right now you can define different um, surfaces, like if you have different types of grass or forest, it will, you can define infiltration uh, per hour over here. I'm going to assume um, infiltration of zero impervious surface and maximum infiltration. I'm going to again 
assume infiltration of zero. And then you have the option of to contain water within the area of interest. In other words, uh, you can, if you check this, uh, you you are not going to, so as it says, when checked, the water is not able to leave through the edges of the simulation area, okay? Um, so I'm gonna apply these changes over here as well, and then I don't need it, so I'm gonna, pin it over here. The other things that you can define, if you have a channel and you want to define channel, you can click on it, define a channel right over here, and then it asks you for the diameter and the roughness, the manning roughness of the channel. Um, this is an interesting feature. If you have a barrier, you can define your barrier um, over here, this would be a levy or something like that. And then it asks you for a height or width. If you have a water source, you can define your water source and apply the uh, flow and the rate of flow in that water source as well. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna actually keep it very simple, just this area, rainfall of 200 millimeters per hour, and then click run for 10 minutes. And when you click run, it will take some uh, time to analyze your digital elevation model, the default one. And after a while, you will be able to see, right now is running the simulation, you'll be able to see the water showing up based on the elevations that it has, the water will show up in different areas. And we have a very high rainfall, so very soon we're going to end up having water accumulated in many areas and essentially connected to Minnehaha Creek. So uh, let's wait for it to see. And this raster is being populated with the depth as the simulation is run. You can zoom in and out as this model is running to see how water is generated in different areas at different times. Um, I should have chosen maybe a darker base map to be able to, maybe actually I can do it right now. Let's see if I can change my um, base map over here to get a better visual effect of what we are going. There we go. This looks much better. And again, if you go under simulation, you can see that seven minutes of my simulation is done. And this is the connections between water. You can, if you have a digital elevation model that you have modified, you can copy and paste that digital elevation model underground and uncheck this default one if you have one. So this is a very interesting, actually, flood simulation. It is not comparable to how HEC RAS simulates flood because there are lots of other processes that are involved in flood simulation. But this is a good... Um, indication of how water flows over a surface, essentially. And it's a, it's a very good indication because you have a very rough infiltration, very rough evaporation incorporated in this as well. Okay, this is the 10 minute the simulation is done, and then you end up with this raster of depth.